Hello everyone, um, this is just another Q&A video because I hit 100,000 subscribers here on YouTube recently, uh, which is fairly neat. Uh, I like it when we hit these milestones, uh, generally because I like making these Q&A videos, to be honest. Uh, so thank you to everyone who's subscribed and supported the channel. Here's to what's the next big milestone after this. Here's to 50 million subscribers, how about that? And let's just get right into it, okay. Uh, hi Sean, have you ever tried vanilla coke? Uh, yes I have. <sighs> Starting with that question. I didn't do any editing on the order of these questions, they're just how I pasted them into the text document here. So uh, yes, I have tried vanilla coke. I'm not going to tell you what I thought of vanilla coke because that wasn't part of the question. So okay, on to the next one. Uh, when are we getting our annual CinemaSins video for 2018? Oh man, those things. Do I really have to do another one of those? I, I don't... I don't want to. <laughs> I hate them. It'd involve watching another year's worth of CinemaSins videos. I don't know. People seem to like them though. Uh, possibly around December, I'd say, around the end of the year, if it happens, which right now it probably won't. What thing have you done so far that you're most proud of? Um, I'll assume you just mean on YouTube here, and it's the Charlottesville video, I think. Uh, that's the one I spent the most time on, and that I think came out the best, to be honest. So yeah, that one. Uh, what's the ideal length for audio takes, or do you try to get it all over with in one go? Well, I answered this in another video, but I tend to record all of my audio in a single go, uh, just because I'm not very good at it, and if I recorded it at different times it would sound different. I've never been able to crack that problem, really. Even in an identical audio setup, my audio seems to sound different, so I just do it all in one go, so there's no uh, noticeable cuts. So now I try to get the script completely 100% finished before I start uh, recording it. Can you hear those that banging upstairs? I'm not going to cut that out today. Um, yeah, there's another one. It's it it's that all the time. So on my like regular videos where I don't want to have just random knocks in the background, I have to try and record sentences in between those knocks. It's it's hellish, and they seem to increase when I start recording as well. I think my upstairs neighbours don't like me very much and wait for me to start recording videos and there's another one. Uh, just start throwing rocks around or something. Uh, seeing as you seem to like Star Wars, what are your thoughts on the prequel trilogy? Do you like them, hate them, or have mixed feelings about them? Uh, I guess I'd fall under the mixed category here. Um, I don't think they're particularly good movies. However, they're not as bad as the internet uh, makes out. And uh, some of the things in there are quite interesting. Like, uh, I I don't know. I'm one of those people who's like, I, I'm happier that the prequels exist than sort of three boring movies that just tried to copy the success of the original trilogy by making something, like, identical, uh, but without the impact, you know? So, I'm ha yeah, I'm happy the prequels exist. And I like the Gungans. I think the Gungans are cool. And I like the pod race as well. I think the pod race is a genuinely good uh, action scene. So yeah, sue me. How do you deal with parasocial relationships, and then in brackets, in which you are not the persona? So I guess this is me being a fan of someone else then. I think you just need to respect boundaries, really. Um, and keep a few things in mind. Like, I have uh, creators on YouTube I really like. I have Twitch streamers I really like. Um, but you have to be aware constantly that what you're seeing is just a a, a public face, really. And I, it's a little bit more of a blurred line than in um, traditional, like, broadcast television, obviously, because it's there's no PR people or handlers or editors in, in between you and them when they're just, like, streaming live on Twitch. Uh, but you're still seeing a uh, a persona and not always the real person. Uh, this question reminded me of uh, that video by uh, Shannon Strucci about parasocial relationships, which I believe uh, she's 
they're making a follow-up to. So I'll link that in the description and you should go check that out. I say I believe she's making a follow-up to I I know she is, because she asked me to record uh, a voice line for it. Uh, so I'll be in that one as well. Um, how do you manage to stay so calm and maintain hope when everything seems so grim? Well, this is a loaded question, isn't it? Uh, I don't often, you know. Actually, this ties into the previous question a little, which is odd because I didn't intend for it to at all. But yeah, what you're seeing there is uh, an act. If I make a response video, the first time I watch through the video, I'm pausing every 10 seconds and swearing and furiously scribbling notes, and I'm incredibly angry about it all. Uh, and then over the uh, creation process, by the time it comes out the other side in in the actual uh, video that goes up on my channel, it's not that I'm suddenly not angry about racism or uh, whatever else I'm talking about. It's that I've decided that that is the best way to present my argument. Um, so it's a fiction, basically. I'm more often a, a very angry and, and moody person, to be honest. Uh, next question. Why are anti-feminist, anti-SJW beliefs so popular? Uh, I got asked this a few times in uh, various forms, and mainly it's because they're easy. It's very simple to look at sort of complicated social, political, economic problems, um, and then just blame all of that on a group of other people who are bad. It's sort of a shortcut into feeling superior to other people, and all types of people do it. Um, it's just lazy thinking, basically. Uh, next question, I really want to make video game reviews and political essays like you and H Bomber Guy, but I'm terrified no one will like me. Um, well, that certainly hasn't stopped H Bomber Guy, so I'd say just go ahead. <laughs> That's not very fair, is it? Um, I'd say if you want to do those things, uh, then you should. Don't let the fear of not being popular uh, stop you, um, because you won't be. <laughs> you definitely won't be when you start out. I made videos for years, as I've mentioned before, uh, with basically no audience at all, or you know, a uh, single or double digit audience for a very long time uh, before, like any of my uh, videos broke a thousand views. It was like two years or something like that. Um, but it was still fun. It was still an interesting way to spend my time, and I learned a lot doing that. Uh, that has helped me out now. So yeah, uh, go ahead. Give it a go. Uh, next question. What are your predictions for the future of the Democrats? Will they move to the left? Will they be surpassed by a more left-wing party? Uh, will they continue to capitulate to Republicans and be absolutely useless? That's from Cameron there. Um, sort of a mix of those. I think Democrats, as in uh, the party membership and people who vote for the Democrats, will probably move further left. I think the party establishment will continue to capitulate to Republicans and be absolutely useless. I mean, the way they're going now, they are going to lose uh, the next presidential election. Like, how they are right now, they, it's over already. Trump is a two-term president. They have absolutely no chance in hell uh, at beating Trump and without a significant shift in uh, policy here. It's best to think of the uh, of the Democrats. It, as in, when, it, when I say the Democrats, I usually mean uh, the party establishment. Um, in terms of energy, as in, uh, they have no energy to do anything. That's why they've latched onto the uh, the Russia thing so much, because it doesn't require them to make any promises. Like they don't have to do anything, or promise something that they'll fail to deliver on. Like they know, at least I hope they know that they could win by running on things like uh, relief for student debt and universal health care and things like that. They must know that they could win if they did that. Um, but they won't, because then they'd have to do it. <laughs> or they think they'd have to do it, anyway. They should learn from the Republicans that you don't have to actually do the things that you promised to do. Like, Democrats tend to... I'm waffling now, but whatever, I'm gonna keep going. Uh, Democrats in the states tend to try to get everything sorted before they decide what they're going to do. Uh, Republicans just say what they're going to do, 
and then worry about the uh, complications later. Like, Trump ran on, big wall, Mexico pays for it. And now there's absolutely no way to do that or make it work. It's a complete waste of time and money and effort, and it makes the country look bad, and it wouldn't do anything even if you did it. Um, but none of that matters. What matters is that he won the election. I feel like they're too addicted to polling, which makes them very boring and unexciting. Like, if you look at universal healthcare, very divisive policy in the United States, anyway, not in sensible countries. Um, yeah, universal healthcare, you get people coming out very strongly in favor of it, very strongly against it. And the Democrats don't like that. They like things that everyone sort of agrees with. So if you poll for universal healthcare, you get a 50 50 split of people being angry or happy about it. Um, but if you poll for better healthcare, it turns out everyone likes better healthcare. Everyone supports better healthcare. So they run on that instead. They say, oh, we're going to work to make healthcare better for everyone. And you're like, but how? <laughs> you know, what are you actually going to do? Like, we're going to make it really good non-specifically. That's how you end up with, like, just, like, middle-of-the-road rubbish like Obamacare. And get it's easy to call it that as, like, someone from a different country where, you know, it hasn't saved my life or whatever. But even accounting for all the people who Obamacare has helped, it is a rubbish system. It's awful. And you just need full universal health coverage in the States. That should be the only acceptable position. I mean, if I lived in the States, I'd encourage people not to support any Democrat who didn't come out in favor of it. But again, I get that. That's very easy for me to say, you know, not living with the consequences of uh, all the other actions. What was the question here even? I don't know. The Democrats are just rubbish, as in the party establishment. There's plenty of local level Democrats who are brilliant and working really hard and doing everything right. Uh, but it feels like if they want to get anything done anytime soon, they're just going to have to go through the party leadership somehow. Uh, I don't know how they are going to do that, but that should be on the agenda of more left-leaning Democrats now. It's okay. How do we get these people out of the party? How do we go around them? Next question. Do you know how artists eventually begin to regret old works that they made? Does that happen to you? And how long does it take to kick in if it does? Um, about 45 seconds, usually. Um, yes, I've got old videos I've taken down because I'm not happy with them anymore. Um, around the time I started getting popular on YouTube was when I started making uh, videos about uh, anti-feminists and alt-right figures and such. Um, and when I set about doing that, it wasn't uh, for some social justice cause, particularly it wasn't because I, I was worried about the reach or corrupting influence of these people or, or anything. Um, it was because I thought that they were really pompous and it would be funny to annoy them. Uh, so the way I went about making videos was totally different to how I do it now. Um, like now I am actually concerned about those things and I actually do make videos about ideas and arguments, or at least I hope I do. Uh, but back then I was just trying to piss people off really. Um, so I've been taking those videos offline now because I'm not happy with them and it's not something uh, I like being out there and representing me. Uh, so yes, basically, I, I tend to go off things that I make. Um, next question, is there any possible way for you to make more videos faster? Yes, uh, I could do that, uh, but I haven't been um, for a few reasons. One thing is I've been thinking of changing maybe to uh, monthly payments on uh, Patreon because some ideas I have are like, I could make a video about that, but there isn't really enough in it to justify me spending the time making it if I'm not going to feel comfortable charging for it. And with a like a lighter video, if I made something like 10 minutes or something, or anything that was substantially either shorter or like more off the cuff. Um, I wouldn't feel comfortable charging for that, charging an audience for that who were used to, uh, you know, a different sort of thing. So I, I just tend not to do those ideas instead. I'm like, well, I can't really justify the time investment if I'm not going to get paid for it. But 
so it just ends up not being made. Uh, but if I went to monthly, um, then I could sort of, I'd, I'd feel more loose about what I could make then. So that's something I'm going to be thinking about in the next few months. If I did that, it would probably be around Christmas this year, I think. I might go over to monthly. I'm not sure. I'll think about it. Uh, do you have any plans to change your format and introduce more visuals? Not really. I wanted to initially, but similar to the last question, you know, this seems to be fairly popular what I'm doing right now. Uh, a lot of people have messaged me to say they treat them sort of as podcasts, and I've started writing them uh, more and more such that they make sense without the visuals as well. I still put visuals in because I think they enhance it, um, make things clearer and such, and you have to refer to a visual every now and then in the script. Uh, but I try to do as much of it as uh, understandable just by listening to the audio. Uh, so I don't have any plans to change uh, the format right now. If I changed formats at all, it would be um, on completely new content that wasn't related to what I was currently doing. So uh, my sort of monthly videos will continue to be the same sort of thing uh, for the foreseeable future anyway. Uh, next question. Why are so many right-wingers into Warhammer? Well, because it's a bunch of militaristic fascist states just clashing into each other constantly. Um, and they love all that shit, <laughs> basically. I think Warhammer doesn't have... Like, everything's horrible in Warhammer. There's no faction you can point to and say, they're the good guys, you know, they're the people who are trying to get it done well. Like, everyone is just a different flavour of horrible. Um, so there's no uh, sort of space within the universe to sort of openly criticize these like horrible societies. Uh, next question, why aren't conservatives funny? Um, and it's interesting this. Uh, it's all relative, of course. I mean, lots of people do think conservatives are funny for whatever reason. Um, but with comedy, you need both the person that like attempting to be funny and you need the audience as well like you need to consider their reaction and their understanding and what they're bringing to it um no one can be funny in a, in a vacuum without an audience really uh playing to conservative audiences you have much less material and fewer places you can go because if you you know very loose characterizations of liberal and conservative thought uh conservatives favor like a tradition, things staying the same, um, they don't like change, they like everyone being one way, one type of thing, um, and that just sort of naturally restricts your available material, because you can't go outside that relatively uh, narrow worldview, whereas uh, on the left you have a lot more spaces you can go, basically. Also, and again, this is just my opinion, uh, comedy works best uh, when you're punching up, um, and conservatives really don't like punching up at all. Uh, next question, how's Brexit treating you? Well, it's an absolute disaster, isn't it? I don't think there's anyone who thinks it's going well. Yeah, it's terrible. It's, I thought about stockpiling food the other day. Imagine that. Like, in... The UK, like, ostensibly a first world developed wealthy nation. I'm thinking about stockpiling food for an upcoming disaster. Uh, next question. What do you think of Jeremy Corbyn? Um, I don't know yet. On the one hand, I really like uh, Corbyn for, but well, he's a left winger, isn't he? Uh, which is great. It's excellent to have an actual leftist at the head of the Labour Party, which should, you know, you'd imagine it be a requirement <laughs> to be the head of the, again, ostensibly left-wing Labour Party, but it's not. So it's very good that he's in there. I hope he is able to transform the party to be more in line with, like, its original intent than what Tony Blair and co turned it into. Now, the reason I am unsure about Corbyn is I'm not sure what he's going to do 
with regards to uh, the whole Brexit disaster. Uh, I was completely not on board with how Labour were handling the whole Brexit thing until fairly recently. I've come around on it a bit. See, what I wanted them to do was to immediately come out guns blazing, trying to shut it down, offering a second referendum, uh, doing everything in their power to stop it. Um, And seeing them just sit on the sidelines was a bit frustrating. Uh, But I've changed my mind now. Um, I feel like Brexit is such a disaster and so terrible that it sort of needs to land squarely on the Tories. Like, that, it needs to be marked down in the history books as the Tories did this and it was a complete disaster. I feel like giving them an out, like if Corbyn came out tomorrow and said, we'll do a second referendum, for one, it would be very risky because a lot of Labour voters voted leave. Uh, Secondly, the Tories would immediately pivot from infighting and destroying themselves and resigning to immediately blaming everything on Labour. They would say, I can't believe Labour is disrupting these negotiations, which were going so well. (laughs) It was perfect until Labour came along and ruined it all. And the very compliant media would swallow it completely. They would say, Labour are backstabbers, hurting our country at this crucial point in the negotiations, which were going wonderfully. Um, So now I'm sort of on board with Labour just sitting on their hands and saying, well, you know, get on with it. Um, However, that's introduced like an element of uncertainty now. Like, I'm not sure what Corbyn would do if he was just handed power tomorrow. Uh, So it makes it kind of hard for me to throw my full, like, unqualified support behind him because his attitude towards, like, this big crucial question about the future of our country is just sort of a question mark to me right now. Um, So it remains to be seen, basically. I hope he's as good as he could be. Uh, Next question. How has YouTube fame affected your opinion of yourself? Um... It hasn't really. And I wouldn't... I'm not YouTube famous, am I? I don't think so. I'm like one six hundredth of a PewDiePie. Like, it's, you know, it's all relative. And because I um, I don't often appear in videos or on camera, like even when I'm streaming, like it's a rare thing, uh, I don't get recognised. Uh, so it's not really affected my opinion of myself all that much. At least I hope it hasn't. It's it's hard to tell when these things are happening to you. But um, one thing I've noticed with a lot of the uh, anti-feminist YouTubers that get quite big, they start thinking that they are geniuses just because they have thousands of people telling them that they're geniuses all the time. So I I always have to remind myself when anyone says, oh, you're really good or whatever, I always challenge it in my head. I'm like, ah, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm actually complete rubbish. Next question. Hey, Sean, just for your 100k Q&A video, who are some of your favourite YouTube channels? Always looking for new folks to watch. Thanks. That's from Nick's Fears there. Uh, Well, one particular channel that I'd I'd like to give a big shout out to is uh, Nick's Fears. I don't know if you've heard of them, question asker. Uh, But they make very good videos about movies. I'll put a link in the description so everyone should head over there and subscribe. It's absolutely criminal that my channel is at 100k subscribers before Nick's Fears has. So go and correct that injustice, please, everyone. Um, As for other YouTube channels, um, I mentioned uh, Shannon Strucci on Strucci Movies earlier. I hope I'm pronouncing your surname okay there, Shannon. Mainly, you could just look at my subscription list on YouTube. I think that's available to be seen. If it's not, uh, it's not. (laughs) I think it is, though. Um, Besides all the other big leftist YouTubers, which I imagine most people know, you know, if you watch me, you you know ContraPoints, you know HBomber guy, probably. Uh, Things that I just watch personally in my own time, I always feel weird giving a plug to. Like, I watch uh, Pan and Coek 2012's Mario videos. 
a whole bunch, but that's because I just find that really interesting. I, I wouldn't do other people like watching that stuff. I don't know. Well, they make very good videos about Mario 64. Um, I like Novel 87's Warcraft lore videos because I'm a big nerd and I actually care about the lore of World of Warcraft. If you can believe it, I am one of the four people, <laughs> I think, none of whom work at Blizzard, who actually care about the law. Uh, so yeah, just check my subscription list, basically, uh, if it's available. If not, I should do like a, I'll do like a Twitter thread of a bunch of channels I think are really good. Remind me to do that. If I don't do that, like, within a day of this video being posted, Someone just poke me on Twitter and I'll do it. I'm using my audience like you'd use Siri or something. <laughs> uh, next question. Have you explored your gender identity much? Any interesting findings? Uh, yes and no. Um, yes, I've thought about gender a lot. I have uh, trans pals. You know, I have non-binary pals. Uh, gay pals and so on. Um... So it's something I, I talk about and think about a fair amount. But personally, um, I'm comfortable with how I'm seen to be, uh, which I've always considered myself uh, quite lucky. What, should I say that? I don't know. I feel bad. I feel like it's giving into a world that sort of uh, oppresses minorities to say, oh, I'm glad I'm not a minority because I don't... I wouldn't want to deal with the, like, oppression and the assholes making me feel bad all the time. I guess I need to qualify that. I, I, I feel glad I'm not because I wouldn't want to deal with the discrimination and not because I think there's anything, um, you know, inherently bad about identifying as any of those things. There we go. I, saw, I, I figured that out live. There we go. Live thought process, everyone. Uh, next question. You've mentioned before people who are a bit overbearing in your fan base who demand you denounce this or that person or speak on a certain issue. Is there any particular way you deal with that? Now, if I'd edited these into a proper list, I would have put this earlier with the uh, <laughs> with the uh, parasocial relationships one. Uh, but yes, something uh, I've struggled with is people uh, seeing the brand um instead of you know me as a person as in if i don't speak about one particular issue that means i am deliberately avoiding it instead of you know i was at tesco and didn't see it <laughs> you know i don't think people literally think i'm like a corporation or something uh with you know handlers and uh a secretary and things and i'm aware of everything but I feel like they sort of carry that mindset over. Like, once you reach a certain size on the internet, people start treating you like that anyway. And, uh, you know, I can have a bad day and not want to get into a big internet argument about something. Um, I remember a point where s uh, some uh, Twitter personality had done something very bad that I disagreed with. Um, and people were asking me to call them out about it. Um, but just that particular day, I was feeling very down and uh, about something in my personal life, a uh, family issue, and didn't really feel like getting into a big argument uh, with someone on Twitter, you know. And that can suck. It's, it's like you don't get days off <laughs> from it. And in a sense, you know, usually I'm happy to try and use my audience for productive things like that, but it's it, it doesn't feel like it's a choice a lot of the time. It feels like you have to do that or you just lose some people forever. Like, I f a lot of people on the left, particularly people in minority groups, are like, so used to being betrayed, air quotes. Well, I guess not air quotes, maybe semi-air quotes, um, by, like, online figures and stuff, that you only really get one chance with a lot of people. So if you don't speak on this or that issue, you're cancelled forever, of course. Um, so the way I deal with that is to just assume that if it wasn't this thing, it would be another thing fairly soon. You can't keep everyone on board forever. You're always going to have some people who disagree with the way you do things. Um, 
So I just rationalize it like that. You know, people are free to decide they don't like me. Yeah. Uh, next question, what do you use to organize or plan video research? Is it just a text document or what? Uh, usually I just use a text document. Occasionally, if I have anything that I'd like anyone else to check out for me, I use uh, like a Google Drive to just up upload it. Uh, when I made the Charlottesville video, I had to print out a whole bunch of maps um, and notes to like keep it all organized. So uh, my uh, room looked a bit like a scene from The Wire or something, you know, <laughs> like a, a whole bunch of maps with notes and uh, little sticky notes stuck all over them. That was fun. You know, I hope I never have to make another video about that topic. Um, but I liked the process of actually putting the video together. Uh, next question, how is your vegetarian diet going? Uh, it was going well until a couple of days ago, um, where I've, I've temporarily put it on hold. Um, I need to take another run at it in a little while. Um, I decided to go vegetarian a few months ago and uh, did so successfully. I didn't eat any meat for like months. Um, apart from, I cheated once with a fish. <laughs> Sounds weird. Um, I never got cravings for meat at all, even though it was like mainly what I ate until then, except for fish. I got fish cravings. And I don't even particularly like fish very much, so that was, uh, that was interesting. But I didn't put enough preparation into thinking about how to go vegetarian, so instead of uh, coming up with vegetarian meals and stuff to fill in, for uh, the meat I was cutting out, I just ate more of the non-meat things that I like that were in my diet, which isn't good for you really. So, I've uh, been feeling not not too great on the old vegetarian diet. Um, uh, so I've had to put a pin in it for now. Um, I am eating meat again, but I, my goal is to go vegetarian and stick with it. So I'm going to spend a little while. Um, experimenting with different uh, food and trying to come up with it like a a menu of foods that I can eat from that sort of ensures that I like actually nutritionally get everything that I need. I'm going to try and make it a, a process instead of just like a uh, immediate thing, you know. Uh, next question, why is it so hot? I'm dying. I feel my melted brain leaking out my ears. And oh, me too. I mean, especially when, I mean, I'm recording audio right now, so I can't have my fan on because it sounds like this. And I can't have the window open because then you can hear everything that's happening outside. So I'm sitting in a hot little room being really hot. Um, it's the worst. I hate heat waves. Where is just cold all year round? I want, I'm thinking about moving, um, Probably next year I'm going to move um, somewhere else. And a big part of me deciding where to move is somewhere where it's colder than it is here. Because I really like the cold. I don't like heat at all. It makes me feel terrible. And it's just hot all the time now. This It, it was a heat wave a while ago and now it's just like, oh, this is just the weather in the country now. It's terrible. And it's hot everywhere else. There's a Heat wave in Japan right now. There was some horrible fire in Greece. Like, oh god, the world's burning. It's it's dreadful. Uh, next question: How do you go about refuting people who make their arguments by simply pointing out a true fact while obviously insinuating some bad political opinion with the fact? So, uh, folks who are very coy about their true beliefs and sort of uh, talk around it, I suppose. Um, I just fill in the gaps that they won't. For instance, uh, you know, you get some people who are racist and who hate black people and think black people are genetically inferior, and they want to spread that message, but they know they can't say that up front because they'll just look like a racist and they'll get banned off whatever platform they're using. So what they do is just uh, list off all the other reasons why uh, black people might not do as well economically or whatever and then dismiss them. They have a list of reasons it could be, and they just cross out everything except for the genetic argument, and then just leave it hanging there and trust the audience to make the leap for themselves. Um, 
So what I do is just step in and force it to go to that position by claiming that is what they believe, deliberately, with heavy air quotes, misrepresenting their position. Um, because that forces them to clarify by saying they do or do not believe it. And then you've sort of neutered the tactic there because you've taken it to a place where they didn't want to go because they were deliberately avoiding it. It's something I've done in videos before. Um, if someone's being very coy about what they actually believe, I just pick a position for them and say that's what they believe because then it makes them say, I don't believe that. Um, it's something I've had success with, uh, for instance, with Stefan Molyneux. Like, I have previously claimed uh, Stefan Molyneux thinks women are inferior, uh, which he does, but he'd never admit to. So I just, like, make the claim for him. And then that splits his audience. I've posted comments before that are, like, one Stefan Molyneux fan being like, he's never said he hates women. That would be a ludicrous thing to say. You're misrepresenting him. And then the next comment is like, he's right to hate women. They're weak and inferior, you know. Uh, next question. I noticed that sometimes in your response videos, you play a lot of clips from the source and other times, like in recent videos, you don't. Is it about the time it takes to make a video editing wise? Or is it to do with the content you'd be quoting from them? Uh, do you ever have misgivings about including clips of people saying slurs and hateful things and the impact it might have on your audience? Uh, yes, this is something I think about quite a lot, and I've definitely been experimenting more with um, just not including clips uh, of other people talking when it's not actually necessary, and just summarizing their arguments for them and trusting my audience to go and view the original video if they doubt me there. Um, Partially because I don't like spreading that content around, even if I'm responding to it, you know? Like, I, I don't like pe making people listen to Black Pigeon Speaks, for instance. Uh, so I've been... It's not anything to do with uh, the video editing time, because it's no time at all, really, to just drop clips in. It probably takes more time to write and record me summarizing their arguments than to just put their clips in. Um, but it's something I've been moving away from. I used to get a lot of comments like... Oh, I struggle to watch Sean's videos because he puts in long clips of like Molyneux or, or whoever. Um, so yeah, I'm attempting to do it without for now. But who knows, I might change my mind later. Uh, next question. Your frog riddle argument relies on the assumption that the rate at which male frogs croak is independent of the sexes of the other frogs, as well as other factors. Since croaking is a social act closely tied to mating behaviour, this assumption is dubious and either way cannot be inferred from the information present in the riddle. There's no valid basis to assume that two male frogs are twice as likely to croak as one male frog, rendering your argument invalid. To summarise this as a question, do you concede that the correct answer to the frog riddle, given only the information presented therein, is two-thirds? Uh, this again. Right. No, I don't agree. I think that if we start making assumptions about the croaking, such as it's tied to mating behaviour, um, then the croaking would actually increase if it was a male-female pair. It would be more likely to occur than if it were two males. Um, because they wouldn't be croaking at each other. It wouldn't be two-thirds, it would actually be some other value. The problem here is that if you make the assumption that two male frogs are not more likely than one male frog to make a croak over a given period, then you'll have to explain why that is. Um, and the answer will invariably be something that makes the outcome of the riddle not be a fixed value anymore because it's information that we don't have. Like saying something like, you know, frogs croak uh, when they're mating, for instance. Um, or saying two male frogs won't croak when they're in close proximity, which, you know, maybe that's true. So two male frogs will be less likely to croak than one male frog. Um, but that makes it the answer to the riddle not be two thirds, doesn't it? Because it's if one you hear one frog croak, then you know that the other one is a female. If you say that two male frogs will croak around other male frogs, but not twice as likely, then you have to account for why the fact that only one would croak. 
And there just isn't the information in the riddle, basically. It's not a good riddle. It's explained poorly. I was right. The riddle was wrong. You're all going to have to wait for the inevitable H-Bomber guy video about the frog riddle that he's been threatening to make for a while. Uh, what's your favourite biscuit? Um, I'm partial to some ginger nuts, actually. Uh, next question, what's your computer setup? CPU, GPU, ETC. Can you hear that plane? I live right next to the airport, it's terrible. Um, I have a 1080 Ti, an i7 8700K, uh, 16 gigs of RAM, um, and a bunch of solid state hard drives, uh, which is neat. I have a fairly good computer on the whole. Uh, I need it for streaming, to be honest. Streaming's difficult. It really taxes everything. <laughs> I feel like there needs to be some sort of... Uh, nah, they wouldn't make it good. I was thinking they should sell, like... they. I don't know who they are, either. Uh, they should sell, uh, like, a streaming rig specifically designed to stream games um, instead of sort of forcing, you know, one CPU to do the rendering of the game and the streaming of the game at the same time. Uh, the next question is, who is the best fictional detective? And my question is... Why is this a question? Because it's obviously Columbo. Columbo is by far and away the best fictional detective. He's brilliant. Uh, the next question is, are you planning on doing more videos like the problem with privatizing the railways? Uh, yes, I am. I have a couple more of those planned. And I said at the start of the year that I'd like to make more videos like that. Um, but things just keep getting in the way. Uh, they take quite a long time to research, those ones. Uh, I still am going to make those videos, but it's just when I get around to them, basically. Uh, I've got one about uh, schools in the works, and then uh, one about health. That's uh, that's just like a skeleton plan for now, but the school one is pretty far along. I could do that like next month, really, if I wanted to. Maybe I will. I don't know. I've learned not to make predictions about when my videos are going to come out anymore. Uh, because invariably something gets in the way, or I change my mind like a month later, or um, some terrible uh, technical problem happens that pushes the release date back. Uh, never listen to me. If I say a video is going to be out by a particular date, um, it almost certainly won't be. Uh, next question. Uh, I want to know what is your opinion about people of the upper class who support the ideas of the left? Uh, I ask because I'm from the upper class. My parents have given me many opportunities in life, which does not mean that I believe these opportunities were deserved. And I feel conflicted about my support for the abolishment of inheritance, because even if I'm completely in favour of it, if my inheritance disappeared, I don't know what I'd do. Um, on the other hand, I think that if there was a certainty that I would not die of hunger or cold in the future, I would not mind at all what happens to my parents' money. Uh, yes. Well, you nailed it at the end there, I think. Um, this is an example of a situation in which uh, when we say we support something, we need to clarify our sort of broader political goals as well. Because if you say, I support abolishing inheritance and then nothing else, a lot of people are going to be very put off by that, obviously. But if it didn't matter if inheritance was abolished because no one would ever uh, want for a place to stay or food or heating or such, then people would be a lot more on board with it. For a lot of these sorts of issues, it's better to explain your full worldview and how uh, your opinion on the particular issue fits into it, rather than just saying, you know, I support abolishing inheritance and that's it. Similarly with uh, saying you want to abolish private property, I mean, if you just say that in isolation, a lot of people assume um, you mean you want to come to their house and steal their car and their pets and things like that, um, which obviously isn't how it works. So I guess what I'm saying is we should push for the full package, really. Uh, hey Sean, this is a pretty stupid question, but I plan to move to the UK at some point in my life soon. Would you advise against it? And do you have any suggestions for a cheap but good place to live? Um, wow, okay, um, I would advise waiting for now and seeing how Brexit turns out. It's, <laughs> uh, right now, we're looking at the, uh, quote, hard Brexit, which means the whole country is going to explode. Um, if you do, if you have to move here for whatever horrible reason, um, 
I would look at places in maybe Wales or Scotland and not England. And if you do have to live in England, I would uh, probably suggest somewhere outside of London, um, just because it's so expensive there, you know. Either way, uh, best of luck to you. You're going to need it. Uh, next question, do you tend to get more enjoyment from multiplayer slash systems driven games where you spend many hours perfecting your play or from games that take you through a story or adventure once and then you're done with it? Uh, well, I'm very boring here and don't really have a preference. I like plenty of games that fall into both of those categories. Uh, what I think makes a game good or bad in this regard is if it knows exactly what it is and... Um, like, the worst of both worlds here is a game that should be a short, story-driven thing, uh, but unnecessarily tax on a bunch of, uh, like, customization, level-up, um, grindy nonsense um, in order to slow the whole game down and just pad the runtime. Uh, so I can like either of these. I, I just like them when they're well-designed uh, for what they are. So I guess what I'm saying is is I like good video games and not bad ones. That's my brave opinion for today. Next question. Is the voice you use in your videos your real voice? Um, mostly, I guess. I don't put on an accent or anything. Um, but in most of my videos, I'm reading from my uh, prepared script. Uh, I'm not in this one, which is why I'm umming and ahhing and uh, speaking slower than you might be used to hearing me. Uh, but mostly, yeah, I sound like this IRL, I suppose. Uh, next question, uh, who is Jen? And I still get asked this quite a lot. I took Jen's name off the YouTube channel and everything. I still get asked who Jen is, like, all the time. And it's so easy to find out, but people keep asking me it. So actually, uh, I'm going to throw this one over to Jen. Hello, I'm Jen. I am not a body pillow or a hand. I am Sean's friend. I am not in the YouTube videos anymore except for this one because nobody believes I am real. If you like me, you should watch our regular live streams on our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Sean and Jen. Okay. Uh, so there we go, that was Jen. Why she chose to read that out like I forced her to at gunpoint, I don't know. So thanks for that, Jen. Uh, yeah. Okay, folks, that's all from me today. Uh, thanks a lot, as always, for watching and subscribing. All 100,000 of you. That is rather scary, isn't it? Um, yes. 100,000 people. Wow. Let's get to a million. Then, then I'll really be scared when we get to a million. Wow, ten times. So it took me like a couple of years to get here. So it's going to take me a couple of decades to get to a million. Assuming like steady growth like it has been going. Wow So I'll be like 50 Let's see if I can get to a million subscribers before I'm 50 Will I still be doing this when I'm 50? I, I, I don't know if I'm happy about that or not actually I mean I like doing it, but am I gonna like doing this when I'm 50? This is a conversation to have with myself off microphone. Okay, uh <laughs> Thanks a lot, folks. I'll see you next time.